You're gonna wanna stay to the end of the video because without one of these skills, your career will never get off the ground. Plus, I'm gonna give you the answers to the A+. Okay, so the first skill that you have to master, the first domain, the first area that we need to be super, super good at is mobile devices. Now you're probably thinking, Rob, mobile devices, you mean like cell phones? Yeah, I mean cell phones, printers, anything that you can get the hell up with and walk across a room with, you need to be proficient. Everything is mobile, whether it's a laptop, no matter what it is, everything is moving. So you have to know how to secure these things, have to know how to set them up, have to know how a network is set up with mobile devices inside. So right now, right now, let's go through a couple scenarios just to see where you are when it comes to your skill set as well as where you are with the A plus certification. Let's get straight into it. All right, gang, let's get straight into it. Let's talk about mobile devices. So these scenarios are gonna be covering mobile devices. Let's get straight into it. A user notices suspicious apps installed on their mobile device. Without their consent, what is the most appropriate initial action to enhance mobile device security? Ignore the apps and continue using the device. Uninstall the suspicious apps immediately. Perform a factory reset to remove all installed apps. Change the device's Wi-Fi password. So, real simple. If you install some weird stuff, if you install some suspicious stuff, let's get that stuff off of there first and foremost. Discuss the importance of enabling device encryption on mobile devices. Choose the option that best summarizes the significance of the security measure. Is it A, device encryption ensures faster performance of the mobile device? Is it B, device encryption protects sensitive data stored on a device from unauthorized access? Is it C, device encryption enhances the battery life of the mobile device? Is it D, device encryption prevents accidental deletion of files on a mobile device? So encryption, simply put, is making sure that only the proper recipient can actually read whatever was sent. So encryption just means that I speak English, let me put this stuff in Japanese because no. You speak Japanese, I speak English. I'm going to put it in English, you speak Japanese, you don't know English, so you wouldn't be able to decrypt or decipher the information, right? So the computer does something much more complex, puts in a lot of different characters, a lot of different hashes, a lot of different things to make sure that only the proper people and the proper recipients can actually read certain things, right? So device encryption protects sensitive data stored on the device from unauthorized access. How? We encrypt it because people can't read it who aren't supposed to have access. Explain the concept of phishing and its relevance to mobile device security. Choose the option that accurately defines phishing. Is it A, phishing involves physically stealing mobile devices to gain authorized, unauthorized access to the data? Is it B, phishing is a technique used to exploit vulnerabilities in mobile device hardware? Is it C, Phishing refers to fraudulent attempts to trick users into disclosing sensitive information or installing malware. Is it D? Phishing is a method of encrypting data stored on mobile devices to prevent unauthorized access. So just like phishing with an F, Phishing with a P is people phishing for information. What's your password? What do you work at? How long have you worked there? Is there a security guard? Is there lights in the parking lot? So on and so forth, right? So basically somebody being nosy using social engineering and different tactics to get as much information as they can out of you. A mobile device user receives an unexpected request for device administrator access from a newly installed app. What action should the user take to ensure mobile device security? Should they A, grant device administrator access to the app? Should they B, deny device administrator access and uninstall the app? Should they C, ignore the request and continue using the app? Or D, restart the device to clear the request?
So what you should do is make sure that any app that you don't trust, any app that doesn't need it, does not have administrator access. So administrator is basically the boss of all bosses, the top of the top. If somebody has administrator access, they can do whatever they want to. They can copy, they can delete, they can create, so on and so forth. Actually, you might want to uh, look through the uh, high quality H2O. It was a little parch. You might want to look through the permissions for a lot of apps that you use. You'd be surprised at the permissions that Instagram, YouTube, uh, email, uh, a lot of those have a lot of permissions that you may not be aware of, and some of them that might scare you a little bit. Describe the role of virtual private networks or VPNs. In enhancing mobile device security, select the option that accurately summarizes the function of VPNs. A, VPNs encrypt all data transmitted between the mobile device and the internet, ensuring secure communication. B, VPNs optimize device performance and speed up internet connectivity. C, VPNs block all incoming network connections to prevent unauthorized access to the mobile device. D, VPNs automatically update the device operating system to patch security vulnerabilities. All right, so uh, VPNs encrypt all data transmitted between the mobile device and the internet, ensuring secure communications. So usually if you're traveling, a lot of us work remotely a lot of people wish to work remotely if you're doing that a lot of times you're going to have to connect to public network whether it's in a hotel whether it's in a coffee shop and you want to make sure that all of the data that you're going to be doing or login information everything that you're doing is going to be encrypted and that's what a virtual private network does so this is an unsecured network we create a secure tunnel for the information the emails and everything to go through and then this is your device right so it allows you to connect to something inherently unsecure and make it secure a vpn whenever you're traveling whenever you're doing something out on your home network i would strongly advise using a vpn so if you got any of these wrong or you don't feel confident please watch this video right here it's a full course for beginners just like you and it'll help you pass the itf plus or just get a fundamental foundation for all this type of stuff next up i want to talk about something that you got to be really good at networking this is a skill that you have to have and i ain't talking about going out getting people to like you high-fiving people no networking how devices are connected how networks are set up networking is just going to be one of those pivotal points that you have to be really 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 good at to even get your career started at all if you're not good at networking it's going to be a major setback for you so let's go over a couple different scenarios a couple different questions just to see where you are and once again if you do terrible on this you're a dummy and you need to start somewhere else now we're going to talk about networking right networking is one of those things that is pivotal to your success in it have to be really good at networking let's go through a couple scenarios see how you do explain the difference between a hub a switch and a router and network infrastructure Choose the option that accurately distinguishes these networking devices. A, a hub connects multiple devices in a network and forwards data to all connected devices. While a switch selectively forwards data to the intended recipient and a router connects multiple networks and manages the data traffic between them. B, a hub selectively forwards data to the intended recipient while a switch connects multiple networks and manages data traffic between them and a router connects multiple devices in a network. C, a hub connects multiple networks and manages data traffic between them, while a switch selectively forwards data to the intended recipient and a router forwards data to all connected devices. D, a hub forwards data to all connected devices while a switch connects multiple devices and a network and manages data traffic between them and a router selectively forwards data to the intended recipient. So what do we think? Hopefully you already know that a hub connects uh, devices and it doesn't care. Whatever's connected to it is going to send 
it to everybody. If it's connected to three devices, all three of those devices are going to get it, right? A hub is just um, a, a center, a, a space, a, a collective, and everybody that is connected to that hub is going to get uh, what that hub got, right? Now, a switch is way more selective. It actually forwards the information to the correct IP addresses, the correct devices, making sure that information flows to the right places. Then a router brings everything together by connecting networks together. If you don't know, the internet is nothing but a huge collection of networks that are connected via routers, right? So a uh, router does nothing more than route information. Describe the purpose and function of IP addresses and a computer network. Select the option that best summarizes the significance of IP addresses. IP addresses identify individual devices within a network and facilitate communication between them by providing a unique identifier for each device. Is it B, IP addresses encrypt data transmitted over the network to ensure secure communication between devices? Is it C, IP addresses determine the physical location of devices within a network and optimize data transmission based on proximity? Or is it D, IP addresses filter incoming network traffic to prevent unauthorized access to devices. So an IP address just simply is a logical address so we can know where to send things on a network. Every cell phone, every printer, every device has an IP address. That's how the network knows where to send things, right? So the IP address is simply your logical address. And just like your home address needs some letters on it, some numbers on it, so everybody knows exactly where to send packages. So UPS, FedEx, everybody else knows to send packages and leave your packages right there at the front door. It's the same thing for your IP address. Discuss the purpose and benefits of VLANs, virtual local area networks and network management. Choose the options that accurately summarizes the significance of VLANs. Is it A, VLANs allow network administrators to physically separate devices within a network to reduce network congestion and improve data transmission speeds? Is it B, VLANs provide a secure method of encrypting data transmitted over the network to protect sensitive information from unauthorized access? Is it C, VLANs enable network segmentation by logically grouping devices into separate broadcast domains, enhancing network security and efficiency? Or is it D, VLANs automatically assign IP addresses to devices within a network to facilitate dynamic allocation of network resources and enhance scalability. All right, so VLANs, that's all they do is network segmentation. It's a virtual local area network. It's literally a virtual network. You can put devices on it. You can put other things on it. It's literally a virtual local area network and allows you to pretty much group devices together and allows you not to have to physically buy any more devices. So it pretty much sets up, separates things into uh, different domains and allows you not to have to physically buy any more equipment. You can put everything on a virtual local area network. But the only thing is the VLANs that you have on a physical device, if the physical device goes down, then those VLANs are going to go down as well. Let's discuss the role of firewalls and computer networking and how they enhance network security. Choose the option that best summarizes the function of firewalls. Firewalls encrypt data transmitted over a network to prevent unauthorized, <laughs> unauthorized access and protect sensitive information. B, firewalls monitor incoming and outgoing network traffic and block or allow specific types of traffic based on predefined security rules. C, firewalls assign unique IP addresses to devices on a network to ensure seamless communication between them. D, firewalls optimize network performance by prioritizing bandwidth allocation for critical applications and services. So you can just think of uh, a firewall as pretty much like a bouncer at a club, right? Uh, if you ain't got on the right shoes, if your breath stink, if you look crazy, they're not letting you in. It's the same thing for 
a firewall, right? So a firewall's main job is to block all traffic that is unwanted and undesirable, depending on whatever rules and standards and permission that you put on that firewall. That's the stuff that it's going to let through. Let's discuss the role of routers and computer networking and how they facilitate communication between devices on different networks. Choose an option that best summarizes the function of routers. Is it A, routers connect devices within the same local network and ensure smooth data transmission? Is it B, routers determine the physical location of devices on a network and assign IP addresses accordingly? Is it C, routers analyze incoming data packets and forward them to their destination across different networks? Is it D, routers encrypt data transmitted over a network to ensure secure communication between devices? Now, we already gave this answer earlier, so if you get this wrong, you're a damn dummy. So we already know that routers literally just route the information. They route the data. So routers analyze incoming data packets and forward them to their destination, right? On different networks or wherever it's supposed to go, you may go through 100 routers. It may only take 60 seconds, but you may go through a bunch of routers to get to your destination to get to uh, where you're trying to get to right so routers just route information and they pretty much connect networks together next up is just hardware in general you need to be very 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 good at just different types of hardware whether it's uh, laptops printers pcs tablets all these different things that run software applications you can connect to the internet you'll have to have a really good intimate relationship with these things so remember hardware is the physical side of course and then networking will be more of the logical side digital stuff stuff that we can't really see and can't put our hands on right so let's go through a couple different hardware scenarios just to see where you are use this as a barometer to see what you suck at all right let's get into some hardware scenarios Describe the role of a CPU or central processing unit. Choose the option that best summarizes a CPU's function. Is it A, a CPU stores files and programs permanently? Is it B, the CPU manages input and output devices? Is it C, the CPU performs arithmetic and logical operations, executing instructions stored in memory? Or is it D, the CPU provides wireless connectivity to the internet? So you already know the CPU is the brain. Without the CPU, nothing happens. It processes every keystroke, everything that you do. The CPU is responsible for that. Without the CPU, there's nothing. And the CPU is located directly on the motherboard. Explain the significance of RAM or random access memory in a computer system. Choose the option that best summarizes the role of RAM. Is it A, RAM permanently stores data and, and programs? Is it B, RAM manages the flow of data between the CPU and storage devices? Is it C, RAM provides long-term storage for files and folders? Or is it D, RAM temporary, temporarily stores data and instructions for CPU to access quickly? So RAM is uh, what we call volatile, which means that if it loses power, it's temporary. Whatever is all stored on RAM is going to be deleted. It's going to be erased every time the power is lost. The only reason RAM is there is just so the CPU can access things quickly. It's a little bit quicker to go through, you know, a few gigabytes of information as opposed to a terabyte of information. So we just keep stuff on RAM that you have recently accessed or accessed quite often so you can get to it much quicker. Explain the role of a motherboard in a computer system. Choose the option that best summarizes the motherboard's function. A, the motherboard stores data and programs permanently. B, the motherboard connects and provides communication between all internal and external components of the computer. C, the motherboard generates power and supplies electricity to all hardware components. 
B, the motherboard manages input and output devices. So the motherboard connects everything, right? Everything that you connect to the USB ports, everything you uh, connect to your lightning ports, your Thunderbolt ports, every your power core, everything, everything is connected to your motherboard. Audio speakers, webcam, whatever you use, a microphone is connected to your motherboard, right? So your motherboard is responsible for that. What's the purpose of storage devices in a computer system? Choose an option that accurately describes the role of storage devices. Is it A, storage devices process and execute commands? Is it B, storage devices provide temporary memory for the CPU to access quickly? Is it C, storage devices permanently store data programs and operating systems? Is it D, storage devices connect the computer to external networks and devices? So we already know RAM is volatile and the storage uh, device, um, the hard drives, those type of things are permanent, right? As long as you don't damage it, as long as it's not corrupted, that stuff is always there. Uh, that's where your operating system is located, so on and so forth. So a lot of times um, if your hard drive is about to fail or if things are going weird, um, you may try and boot your computer and say no operating system file. Most times, where is it looking for the operating system? On your hard drive or your main storage device, okay? Describe the role of expansion cards in a computer system. Choose the function that accurately summarizes the function. Is it A, expansion cards connect the computer to external displays and monitors? Is it B, expansion cards provide additional processing power to the CPU? Is it C, expansion cards enhance the computer's networking capabilities? Is it D, expansion cards add new features or functionality to a computer by providing additional ports, connectors, or processing capabilities? Easy. I don't even think I have to, that's exactly what it does, right? So an expansion card expands what the PC or laptop can already do right new ports faster ports uh, is going to be more functionality and more features added uh, with the better expansion cards that you have now we're going to talk about the cloud right so cloud computing is a skill that is necessary before it was like a nice to have but now pretty much everything runs in the cloud every organization has something in the cloud you probably got some baby pictures or some videos that you don't want your mama to see in the cloud right now so it's something that you have to be proficient another in. thing that we're going to just lump into cloud computing is virtualization right so you got to be good at virtualization and cloud computing as always if you ain't really picked up the rhythm yet right now we're going to go through some scenarios we're going through some questions just to see where you are once again, if you've got anything wrong, go to our uh, ITF Plus Beginners course and go through that first, right? Go through that first. And also, if you want uh, some more help, if you want to have me as an instructor and have an entire team behind you to get you into tech, go down in the description and apply to the Zero to IT Hero program. We'd love to have you. Now, this is a, a hot button one. Let's talk about cloud computing. So cloud computing, is really important and it's definitely one of those skills that we got to have so let's see where we at let's see how bad you guys suck at this all right discuss the concept of cloud computing and its significance in modern it infrastructure choose the option that best summarizes the essence of cloud computing is it a cloud computing refers to the physical storage of data on local servers within an organization's premises is it b cloud computing involves the delivery of computing services including servers storage databases networking software over the internet offering flexibility scalability and cost effectiveness is it c cloud computing exclusively relies on on-premises hardware and software for data storage and processing is it d cloud computing is a method of data encryption to secure sensitive information within an organization
So long story short, cloud computing is basically using somebody else's computer, right? And it's not actually in a cloud, it's just connected to the internet. As long as you have a connection to the internet, you have a connection to the cloud. iCloud, Google Drive, so on and so forth. So that is the main purpose and uh, the main advantage of cloud computing and why a lot of organizations run a lot of their things in the cloud. Because as long as somebody has an internet connection, they can connect to all the things that they need. Explain the concept of infrastructure as a service in the cloud. Let's pause right here. So uh, I'm pretty sure you guys have been seeing acronyms. There's going to be a bunch of acronyms on the um, certification exams, and there's a bunch of acronyms in the realm of tech. So the acronyms that pop up uh, most often, you need to get familiar with them so you just don't look like a complete dumbass, basically. Uh, just make sure if you see a acronym that you uh, figure out what it stands for, um, which figure out what it stands for, what it does, um, the parts, procedures, everything that goes along with it. And if it's broken or if somebody uses it incorrectly, what are the symptoms of that type of stuff? Is infrastructure as a service uh, involves delivering software applications over the internet on a subscription basis? Infrastructure as a service provides virtualization, computing resources such as virtual machines, storage and networking over the internet, allowing organizations to build and manage their IT infrastructure. Information as a service not information. Damn, I, just, I think I just said something <laughs> a different word for each one. It's infrastructure as a service focuses on delivering platform specific services such as databases and uh, development tools over the internet. Infrastructure as a service refers to the process of outsourcing the management of hardware and software infrastructure to a third party provider. What do we think infrastructure as a service is? Real simple, man. Infrastructure server provides virtualized computing resources such as virtual machines, storage, and networking over the internet, allowing organizations to build and manage their IT infrastructure. Basically meaning that you can run everything that you need on somebody else's devices, right? So whether it's PCs, whether it's servers, DNS server, DNC, whatever, whatever you need, you can run that on somebody else's equipment. They can manage it as well. So that's all it is. Basically meaning that you're using somebody else's infrastructure as your own, right? So you're just borrowing their equipment for uh, a year or a month to month or day to day, right? To run um, your organization. Okay, discuss the benefits of platform as a service or pass and cloud computing. So a pass eliminates the need for organizations to manage underlying infrastructure, allowing them to focus solely on developing and deploying applications. PaaS offers an on-demand access, this is B, to virtualized computing resources such as servers and storage over the internet. C, platform as a service or PaaS provides pre-built software applications and tools over the internet, reducing development time and costs. D, platform as a service enables organizations to store and retrieve data over the internet using virtual databases and storage solutions. What do we think PaaS is? So PaaS eliminates the need for organizations to manage underlying infrastructure, allowing them to focus solely on developing and deploying applications. That's pretty much, you know, some of this stuff doesn't need to be expounded upon. And also, like I said, um, we didn't went through um, 20, 30 questions already. Just make sure that if you got any of these wrong, it's time to reassess uh, where you are. All right, discuss the concept of cloud storage and its advantages in cloud computing. Choose the option that best summarizes the benefits of cloud storage. A, cloud storage refers to the physical storage of data on local servers within an organization premises. B, cloud storage allows organizations to store and access data over the internet, offering scalability, accessibility, and redundancy. C, cloud storage involves encrypting data stored on local devices to prevent unauthorized access, or D, Cloud storage enables organizations to establish private networks for secure data transmission and communication. Mm -hmm. 
So just like we were talking before, you know, cloud storage is just borrowing um, somebody else's server to store stuff on. Before, uh, not too long ago, 100 gigabytes was like, oh, I'll never use that much. Now, you know, people are filling up um, terabyte hard drive, two or three terabytes of uh, pictures, photos, videos, um, shit that we won't talk about, won't mention, stuff that they're uh, afraid for other people to see. But, you know, just people are using data is like gold now, right? um uh for me uh you know i hey i think my phone has i don't know 200 and something 200 and something uh gigabytes of storage and since i've had children i didn't fill that shit up so you know it can definitely happen explain the concept of hybrid cloud computing a hybrid cloud combines public and private cloud resources allowing data and applications to be shared between them B, hybrid cloud exclusively relies on public cloud infrastructure for data storage and processing. C, hybrid cloud involves storing data and applications on local servers within an organization's premises. D, hybrid cloud utilizes dedicated network connections to ensure secure data transmission between multiple cloud providers. So hybrid is just means it's public and private, right? So some of the stuff is public. Anybody can rock out to, with it or mess with it or look at it or so on and so forth. And private is more secure, right? So only our organizations should have access to um, these type of things. And then it allows you to share information and data between those two. Now we're going to talk about something that everybody, and I do mean everybody that's watching this damn video needs to be good at needs to know and that's troubleshooting troubleshooting is a fancy way of fixing shit that's broke right so if something breaks you fix it right that's what troubleshooting is you're just analyzing and making sure that everything is good so when you're going through compt exams there's a special troubleshooting mythology right actual steps do this first then do this then do that right on the actual exam make sure that you pay close attention to these steps because you can't paraphrase you can't make up anything even though it may technically uh, be right uh, for example let's say that you uh, say i gotta figure out what's wrong. on the exam that would be wrong because the first step is identifying the problem is saying figure out what the hell is wrong and identifying the problem the same thing to me yes but on the exam it's not so if you don't know what the hell i'm talking about don't know the troubleshooting steps go to our passing a plus playlist and we actually have a full i think it's like a 20 minute lecture on the entire troubleshooting mythology what different steps go where and where to pretty much insert yourself and what you would do at every step one of the skills is a skill that you have to have or you will fail again and again and again, whether it's an exam, whether it's a certification, this is it. You have to be really good at troubleshooting. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple seconds, right? To do a few things. So um, this channel, like if you're not a student uh, of the Zero to IT Hero program, if you haven't um, you know, supported us uh, monetarily, uh, we would strongly hope that um, you would do a few things because we don't really make uh, any money off of YouTube. This is literally uh, to help uh, propel you guys into tech. So if you could uh, right now, like the video, share it with two people and leave a comment on if this was helpful and what you would like for me to do a video on next. I'm going to give you guys a little bit more time. Um, I'm taking time out of my day to help you guys. So all, you know, it's only right that you reciprocate. So I'll give you guys time to do that. All right. So if uh, you did it, thank you so much. If you didn't do it, go to hell. All right. So um, a user reports frequent application crashes on their computer. Which step from the CompTIA troubleshoot mythology should be performed first? So CompTIA, if you don't know, uh, like I said, go through the playlist and uh, you'll see the uh, CompTIA troubleshooting steps. And 
this will make a lot more sense to you, right? But even if you uh, haven't gone through the troubleshooting steps, it's going to make sense to you anyway, because even though um, they have a more stringent, st structured, this is the way it's supposed to go, this would be helpful um, no matter if it's day one on a job or shit if you was a CEO, really. Just, you know, just pretty much gives you a process of uh, problem solving. So would we A, restart the computer, B, identify the problem, C, establish a theory of probable cause, or D, establish a plan to resolve the problem. So if you're not familiar with this, you're probably like, oh, we're starting the computer. You got to identify what the hell is wrong first, right? Because if you don't know what the problem is, you may not need to restart. Now, a lot of times restarting it will fix it or restarting it may back it up. Right. Because if it's going through updates or if it's going, if it's downloading something, uploading something and you oh just restart it, you may be breaking something. Right. So the CompTIA troubleshooting steps, the A plus troubleshooting steps, the security plus troubleshooting steps, the cash plus troubleshooting steps, any CompTIA exam troubleshooting steps, the first step is going to be to identify the problem. A printer is producing faded prints. What CompTIA troubleshooting step should be performed next after identifying the problem? Should we implement the solution or escalate as necessary? Should we B, test, test the theory to determine the cause? Should we C, determine findings, action, and outcomes? Should we D, establish a plan of action to resolve the problem? So with the CompTIA troubleshooting steps, you just establish a plan of action to resolve the problem. We already identified the problem, right? We know what the problem is. We already identified that. So let's come up with a plan of action on how we're going to actually fix this issue. A network printer is not responding to print requests from multiple users. What should be the next step after establishing a plan of action and CompTIA's troubleshooting mythology? Should we test the theory to determine the cause? Should we document findings, action, outcomes? Should we implement the solution? Should we verify system functionality? So we need to test the theory, right? We need to test the theory to figure out what we should do, right? And it's real simple. It says, Next step after establishing a plan of action. The next step after that is two steps. Test our theory, right? We think we know what it is. That's where we got a plan of action. So let's test that theory and test that plan of action. A user's computer is unable to connect to the company's VPN. What should be done after testing the theory and CompTIA troubleshooting mythology? Should you document findings, actions, and outcomes? Should you implement the solution or escalate as necessary? Should you identify the problem? Or should you verify full system functionality and implement preventative measures? So you got to implement the solution, right? And let's say if one, you don't come up with a solution or two, your solution doesn't work. It's probably time to escalate, right? Okay, I tried, you know, my knowledge and you know, everything I learned um, on YouTube and Google and all this other shit, it's not working. Let me escalate. Um, let me let escalate the issue to um, see if I can get some help. Uh, user smartphone is experiencing frequent battery drain. What should be done after verifying full system functionality and the CompTIA troubleshoot mythology? Document findings, actions, and... Outcomes. It's always uh, the final step to save you time, energy. I think I already did this. All right. So the next thing we need to talk about is operating systems, right? So operating systems is what your applications and YouTube and whatever you're watching, that's what it actually runs on. So there's a bunch of different operating systems. You got Linux, you got Windows, you got Mac, you got a bunch of different operating systems and you need to be well versed 
and all of them. This is a skill set that you need to have to start your career and to make sure that you continue to progress year after year after year. Now, I know that you may have your favorite operating system, things that you love about it, blah, 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 but you need to at least be able to navigate around different operating systems so when you come across a, a new machine or a new operating system, you won't be completely like, I don't know what the hell's going on, I don't wanna touch this, I have no idea what this is. So, uh, like we've been doing, I'm gonna go through some stuff we're going to see where you are as far as operating systems are concerned. If you get any of these things wrong or if you want our assistance, make sure that you look in the link in the description and apply to the Zero to IT Hero program and we'd be happy to help you. But not just pass the exam, actually land a career. Let's talk about operating systems. So operating systems are super important when it comes to your tech career, when it comes to troubleshoot when it comes to everything, right? We got to know different operating systems. So let's just talk about uh, different ways to look at stuff and just go through a couple of scenarios. As always, if you suck at this, it's time to get you some help. All right, so discuss the role of an operating system and a computer system. Choose the option that best summarizes the essence of the operating system. Which one of these do we think it is? I'll let you guys read these long ass answers. So simply put, an operating system serves as an interface between users and hardware, managing resources and providing essential services to applications. Windows 10 operating system, Windows 11 operating system, Mac operating system, your phone have, has an operating system, your tablet has an operating system, it's just the go-between between, between uh, the hardware and what the hardware and software are gonna do together, right? It operates your system. Literally, that's what operating system is. Discuss the significance of memory management on operating systems. Choose the option that best summarizes the importance of memory management. Yeah, I ain't reading these long ass answers. <laughs> y'all can read, I hope, because if y'all can't read, we got other issues. So memory management, right? It's the best way to know how to allocate space, right? So let's allocate more space for things that need space, unless a take away or deallocate space away from things that don't need as much space. And that way you can prevent a lot of um, overusage and memory leaks. Let's talk about the role of device drivers and operating systems. Which one of these best summarizes the significance of a driver? So literally a driver tells your laptop, your PC, how to use something. So if you plug in a mouse, the driver says, hey man, that's a mouse, this is how we work together. You plug in a keyboard, this is how we work together, webcam, so on and so forth. The device driver is simply the telling the computer and giving the computer instructions on, okay, this is how we work together with this device. Let's talk about virtual memory. What is virtual memory and operating systems? Which one of these accurately defines virtual memory? So virtual memory literally um, expands the memory that is on a device. Only thing is virtual memory isn't as stable, isn't as fast, and it's kind of like a, a last ditch effort for um, add memory, right? Um, but if you need to, you can do virtual memory. Uh, one of the reasons that I'm not answering the questions for this portion, one, I don't fucking feel like it. And two, um, on the actual exam, nobody's going to be whispering in your ear. Nobody's going to be talking to you. So I believe this part um, you guys can read um, on your own and come to the best conclusion.
Explain the concept of user authentication and operating systems. Choose the option that accurately defines user authentication. So there's a difference between authentication and authorization, right? So authentication is proving you are who you say you are. And authorization is actually giving you access to the things you're supposed to have access to. So it just simply verifies your identity. Now we're going to talk about where the money is. Security, right? So in this portion, we're going to talk about security. And this is one of the skills that you have to have. It doesn't matter if you're not working in cybersecurity, you still need to have a security mindset. If you're a software developer, if you're front end, back end, if you are a server administrator, if you are just a help desk person, you have to make sure that a security is number one. And another thing is this, when it comes to data, right? When it comes to data, you're not necessarily working in tech, but data has to be kept secure. So you always have to be security minded. Now, why did I say this is where the money is? Because it is. Cybersecurity is booming uh, right now and will continue to boom as long as people are stealing identities and uh, buying uh, Ferraris and uh, bologna sandwiches with other people's money. <laughs> now we're gonna talk about security. Everybody's favorite or should be your favorite. Because like I said, uh, no matter uh, if you are an expert in cybersecurity or not, this is um, one of the parts of tech that you need to always be focused on. No matter where you are, even if you were um, a project manager or you are in more of a, a management role, you still need to be thinking about security when it comes to devices, when it comes to training employees. Everything needs to be as secure as possible. Oh, another thing. Um, Man, this is one, one thing that may come up. Uh, where did you get these questions from? How do I know this is the right answer? One, I made them myself. Two, I made them myself, so I know the damn answer. So let's go straight into it. Discuss the concept of cybersecurity and its importance in the modern digital landscape. Choose the option that best summarizes cybersecurity. Is it A, cybersecurity refers to physical protection? Is it B, Cybersecurity involves safeguarding computer networks and system from unauthorized access. Is it C? Cybersecurity is solely concerned with protecting data stored in physical filing cabinets. Is it D? Cybersecurity focuses on optimizing internet speed and connectivity. So the main purpose of cybersecurity is um, securing things, like we said, and making sure that unauthorized people and systems don't have access to the things they're not supposed to have access to. Uh, when you get into um, your field, when you get into doing what you want to do, uh, cybersecurity uh, is best when it's proactive as opposed to reactive, meaning that you try to be more preventative than reactive, like, oh, Something they messed up. Oh, they stole all their damn money. Oh, they stole a bunch of people's identity. Let's figure out uh, what to do next, right? It's, it's easier or better to be a preventative than uh, reactive. So let's talk about encryption. We talked about it already. Uh, what do you think the role of encryption is and how does that help ensure data security? Is it A, encryption prevents data from being transmitted over the internet? Is it B, encryption protects data by converting it into a secure, unreadable format using algorithms and keys? Is it C, encryption slows down data processing and transmission speeds? Is it D, encryption increases the risk of data loss and corruption? What do we think? So encryption, uh, as we said several times uh, during uh, this lecture, uh, during this uh, course, during this uh, wonderful uh, piece of the internet that I've created for your enjoyment, encryption protects data by converting it into secure, unreadable format using algorithms and different hashing keys. What's the significance of access control? Choose the option that best summarizes the importance of access control. Is it A, access control 
mechanism to restrict internet access to specific websites. B, access control ensures only authorized users can access resources, systems, and data. Is it C, access control measures pro prioritize speed and efficiency over security? Is it D, access control mechanisms focus solely on physical security, such as securing entry points to buildings? So uh, access control uh, covers physical as well as digital, right? And the main purpose of access control is just making sure that only the right people have access to buildings, applications, employee files, so on and so forth, right? So literally access control is literally you controlling access, right? So physical access control, locks, cameras, sign-in log, uh, digital access control, file and folder permissions, login credentials, so on and so forth, right? Uh, discuss the role of antivirus and protecting computer systems from malware. Choose the option that best summarizes the function of antivirus software. A, antivirus software improves computer performance by removing unwanted files and applications. B, antivirus software encrypts sensitive data to protect it from cyber threats. C, antivirus software detects, prevents, and removes malware infections. Uh, whether it's viruses, worms, trojans, and ransomware. D, antivirus software monitors internet speed and connectivity. We're going to know the answer to this. Antivirus tries to detect, prevent, and eradicate or remove um, any type of malware. Discuss the importance of patching and updates in cybersecurity. Which one of these best summarizes the importance of software updates and patching? Is it A, software updates enhance internet speed and connectivity? B, software updates introduce new features and functionalities to software? C, software updates fix security vulnerabilities, bugs, and weaknesses prevent exploitation by cyber attackers? D, Software updates increase the risk of system crashes and data loss. So we already know software updates fix vulnerabilities, bugs, and weaknesses. Now, when you get on a larger scale, it's uh, really important to test uh, these uh, patches and these updates before you put it in a production environment, before you put it in a live environment, before you try it on people's shit that actually are real and actually have to use it, it's a good idea to um, go to a test environment just to see, okay, is it compatible with what we do? Um, and another thing is uh, when you update and when you patch, it's usually a great idea to do that when there's not too many people on the network. So just in case if it does mess up, just in case it does do something weird, it's not at a peak time and a bunch of people are going to be affected. Now, the next skill is going to be piggybacking off another skill, right? So I just said troubleshooting, but I wanted to kind of make sure that you understood. You got to know how to troubleshoot software as well as hardware. We got to figure out what's wrong with it physically or if it's something logical or something inside the software, a compatibility issue or something is broken. We have to figure out how to troubleshoot both of those scenarios. Last but not least is something that's super important. It's not technical at all really it's operations and just different procedures and processes far too many people discount operations and processes and systems of ways to get things done you have to be super proficient at operational procedures so for this last skill it's not going to be as technical but it's going to be extremely helpful especially when it comes to working with the team being in charge of people that type of stuff so now we're going to talk about operations right so um, operations um, is going to be um, the last uh, portion we talked about. So um, when we covered troubleshooting, um, that was going that covered the software and uh, the hardware portion. So this is going to be the last skill that we need uh, to pass A plus. And like I said, um, a lot of these fundamentals are what you need to be in tech in general. I'm going to cross a lot of people um, right now who have been doing the wrong thing for a long time. 
Oh, I've been in tech for 10 years. Oh, I've been in tech for 20 years. Oh, I've been in tech for this amount of time, that amount of time. And uh, right now is uh, one of the hardest times to get a job, right? Um, but not for everybody. For most people, yeah, but not for everybody. Uh, for most people that think that, you know, they got an old ass degree that nobody gives a damn about, uh, I should get a job or people that has been in tech for five, seven, 10, 20 years. At the same company, and a lot of times, um, the only reason that they were there so long was seniority, or the company was doing so good. But then, when it comes to you know cutting and laying people off, or they were some of the first people to go. And that's another thing um, in tech. Um, a lot of times, layoffs may be um, uh, unavoidable, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times, people that get laid off aren't necessarily uh, the worst. Uh, it's not like oh they suck. But if you suck, you damn sure gonna get fucking laid off. It ain't it ain't nothing to talk about. Uh, but one thing is, if you're great at what you do, you'll get laid off from a company and end up getting hired the same day, same week from another company, right? But you always got to be constantly, and I told you guys this a million times, constantly sharpening your tools, constantly networking, constantly seeing what's out there, what's the next uh, skill I need to do, uh, what's the next opportunity I need to, I need to. Um, to master. And another thing is if you're in tech, all that uh, uh, showing up late, uh, not working late. Uh, basically, right now, you got to be on top of your shit. You got to be doing uh, above and beyond uh, for one to keep your options open and one, you know, like I said, to keep your uh, current job. Right now is not the time to be playing. Right. I mean, a lot of you are already starting. I mean, are, are just starting. Right. And a lot of you are going to spend a, a lot of time, a countless amount of time fucking off, uh, watching free shit like this, uh, looking at stuff on Instagram and TikTok and thinking that that is uh, productivity. It's not productivity, right? If you don't fucking go take this test after watching this, it was no point. If you don't um, get some type of mentorship, if you don't get um, in some type of program, if you don't move further, you just wasted however long this hour however long this goddamn training is you're just wasting an hour of your life and you're still you still got to take your ass back to uh that amazon warehouse you still got to take your ass back to that fire station you still got to take your ass back to the police station you still got to put on that army uniform you still got to put on that nurse uniform you still got to put on whatever you are doing whatever's got you burnt out whatever's got you fucked up you're gonna have to do that this just made you feel good like oh yeah i like rob the way he teach man that's not what i'm here for right um, I'm here to help people like you transition into tech, right? And I told you guys a thousand times uh, how I can do that um, for the people who are uh, not wanting to invest in themselves or the people that um, lack confidence in themselves um, so they couldn't have confidence in anything else. That's what this channel is for. It's, it's, it's fucking seven, eight hundred videos. Uh, let's just fuck it. Let's just let's just. Let's just say it's only 100 videos, but it's a bunch of goddamn videos. It's literally 700 or something, but let's just say it's 100 videos that can definitely, uh, not only is comments underneath every fucking video, can help you start a tech career, help you pass a certification, right? So if you won't even, you know, spend your time to go through this stuff to literally change, you know, change your life and change your circumstances, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm telling you right now is not the time to be lazy. Right now is not the time to be fucking off. Right now is not the time to be uh, expecting something for nothing, right? So basically, this is, um, you're at the starting line, right? This video is just, you didn't, they didn't even shoot the gun yet. They didn't tell you to go. This is just a starting line, right? It has to be more after this or not. All right, so uh, explain the concept. Let me make myself small. Explain the concept of operations management and its importance in organization. Choose the option that best summarizes the significance of operation management. Is it A, operation management involves overseeing administrative tasks within an organization? Is it B, operations management focuses on optimizing processes to achieve efficiency, productivity, and quality? Is it C, Operations management is primarily marketing and promoting products to customers. Is it D? Operations management deals with managing financial assets and investments within an organization.
So operations is literally helping with processes to do things more uh, efficiently, optimizing things. Operations, how a company operates, how employees operate, how the devices operate, and how we all come together and have a synergy to make things um, as productive as possible, right? Um, and also um, increasing speed, not um, quality, right? So operations uh, and operations managers, um, this is a non-technical uh, role, but you have to have some type of technical experience uh, to be a to be a good project manager and a great project manager, or operations manager, or leader, you have to have the technical aspect because it's going to kind of be hard for you to lead people um, when you have no idea what the hell they're doing. Right? Let's talk about inventory management. Which one of these accurately defines inventory management? A inventory management involves organizing and maintaining financial records related to purchases and sales transactions. B, inventory management focuses on managing physical assets such as raw materials, work in progress, and finished goods to ensure optimal levels and minimize costs. C, inventory management deals with overseeing customer service. Whoa. Inventory management deals with overseeing customer service operations and resolving issues related to product delivery and quality. D, inventory management involves developing marketing strategies to promote and sell products to target customers. So inventory management is literally uh, focusing on inventory. How many laptops do we have? How many cell phones do we have? How much paper do we have, right? And when you do that, it allows you to uh, minimize costs, right? Do we have too much? Do we have too little? If we don't have enough, you know, that could cause that could be opportunity costs for uh, employees not being able to do something, users not being able to do something. So you have to have proper inventory management. Let's talk about quality management, right? Which one of these best describes quality management? Quality management, quality assurance, uh, kind of all rolled into one, but let's just call it quality management for now. Quality management involves managing financial resources and investments to maximize returns for stakeholders. B, uh, quality management focuses on ensuring that products or services meet or exceed customer expectations. C, quality management primarily deals with managing employee performance and conducting training programs. D, quality management involves developing marketing campaigns to enhance brand awareness and customer management. So, that's simple. Uh, quality management focuses on ensuring that products or services meet or exceed customer expectations through continuous improvements and adherence to quality standards. Let's talk about lean manufacturing, right? So which one of these do you think covers lean manufacturing, summarizes pretty much why it's significant? A, lean manufacturing involves maximizing production output by overloading production lines with excess inventory. B, lean manufacturing focuses on eliminating waste, reducing production lead times, and improving efficiency through continuous process improvement. C, lean manufacturing emphasizes investing in advanced technology and automation to streamline production processes. D, lean manufacturing primarily deals with outsourcing production activities to third-party vendors to reduce costs. So lean manufacturing focuses on eliminating waste, reducing production lead times and improving efficiency through continuous process improvement, right? So you just pretty much keep on saying, how can we do this faster with less people? <laughs> how can we do this uh, faster for less money, right? So lean, instead of being fat, you're going to be lean. So you're trying to cut the fat, trying to cut anything extra, but still deliver the same amount of quality in the same amount of time or faster. For making it all the way to the end of this video, I'm going to give you something that somebody should have gave you a long ass time ago for not being subscribed to this channel.